F1 engines are excellent at the moment. Us olders that love the V10s whinge a little bit about the noise, but you can't deny that they deliver 1,000 horsepower, are extremely efficient with their hybrid systems, and do it without using more fuel than your Corolla. That's not actually true, but you do get my drift. But Formula One could be banning the MGUH in the 2026 engine regulations, and that's a bigger deal than you might initially think. It's going to ruin the drivability of these engines and likely make them less efficient. So let me explain what's going on and we can decide together whether this is a good or bad thing for Formula One. Let's go. So the MGUH, why is it a big deal? Well, it almost doubles the regen ability of these Formula One cars. So yes, they regen the majority of their energy under braking using the motor in the back of the car, the MGUK, to regenerate the energy and charge the battery. And this is exactly what electric cars do as well. But the other half of their electrical power comes from the turbo. F1 call this heat regeneration, but that can be a bit misleading. The MGUH uses excess power from the turbo to spin a generator. So these cars are regenerating down the straights too, and not just in the braking zones. But for some reason, F1 are looking into banning it. The MGUH is looking like it will be gone for the 2026 technical regulations. And that's a shame because it is absolutely genius. The reasoning is said to be down to cost, which you have to have respect for. I can't imagine the resources that have gone into and currently go into developing these things. But it may be that there is larger pressure. Porsche and Audi have been rumoured to be joining Formula One soon, and it's generally understood that Porsche don't want the MGUH in the rulebook. And they do kind of have a point. Currently, there is no need for an MGUH type device in road cars. They can actually regenerate enough power just using their motors. Then it makes more sense when you consider that Porsche are used to dealing with MGUK type devices in the World Endurance Championship. Their LMP1 cars have had them and their upcoming hypercar will have them too. But aside from that, it looks like Formula One are doing this for another reason as well, to make the cars potentially less drivable. So let me explain. Quickly, there are a couple of things that you need to know. A turbo works by using exhaust gases to spin a turbine, which is connected to a compressor with another turbine. This compresses the intake air for the engine, meaning that you can burn more fuel and create more power. But this is actually a wastegate. It's there to release boost if the pressure gets too high. Engines can only deal with a certain amount of boost, but the exhaust gases can create way more than the engine can take. And it also makes a core noise when it releases as well. Turbos work best at very high RPM. And the bigger the turbo, the longer it takes them to get up to speed. So you could get on the throttle and the turbo may take a couple of seconds to start creating peak power. This is called turbo lag. The MGUH is essentially a motor attached to the turbo. But since the split turbo design that Mercedes pioneered in 2014, it's made more sense to put the motor between the compressor and the turbine. This actually sits in the V of the engine, packing it all in very tight. Looking at the right hand side, this is the turbine. It's driven by exhaust gases that turn the turbine shaft, which runs the whole way through this, which can regenerate the energy for the car. Then on the end is the compressor, which compresses the air and creates boost for more power. So the MGUH uses the rotation of the turbo to harvest energy and charge the battery. And so now Scarbs will help explain. So when the driver is at full throttle, the turbocharger is delivering too much boost that the engine could cope with. Normally a wastegate would open and let those exhaust gases slip straight out of the exhaust, uh, losing all of the energy that you've built up. What the teams do with the deployment of the MGUH is when the turbocharger starts to deliver too much uh, pressure uh, along the straights when you're at wide open throttle, they turn it into a generator which slows the turbocharger down, brings the boost down to the level that the energy requires, which means all that excess energy, which the Formula One regards as excess heat, which is why it's called the MGUH, H for heat, uh, goes either straight back into the battery or can be rerouted, as I said, out to the MGUK. And this means that you know, you're creating energy, you're saving energy while you're on the straight. But the MGUH has another trick to making these cars go faster. What it's used for is twofold. Um, when it's used as a motor, it will take energy that it's previously stored in the battery 
and spin the turbocharger up. This means that the turbocharger is always spinning at maximum RPM. Now it can't be used as a kind of an electric supercharger, that's not allowed. But what it can do is when you're off throttle, it will keep the turbocharger spinning. Now this is really what conventional anti-lag is trying to do and what Formula One teams can't do with the excess of petrol that that requires. So when the driver does go back on the throttle, the turbo is already at the correct speed and ready to go. This is called anti-lag. It allows you to fit a huge turbo for big power, but without the decades of lag you would normally get with a huge turbo. Incidentally, rally cars came up with a different solution to this a while back. Conventional anti-lag solutions involve squirting extra fuel and igniting it in the exhaust, which gives you the, the pop and bang anti-lag that you hear on rally cars and so many boy races uh, up down the high street of an evening. You can't really get away with that in Formula One. There just isn't the excess fuel. They need it for driving the engine rather than just use it as an anti-lag. So with there being so much nearly free energy coming from the MGUH, the teams got clever with it, as they always do. Engine manufacturers have therefore played about with the size of the turbocharger, both the turbine and the compressor, effectively oversizing them so they would deliver more boost than the engine can ever deliver. But that means that you would then get the, you know, the, the energy recovery along the straights. If it was the perfectly sized turbo for a conventional engine, it, it probably wouldn't work half as well. So bigger turbos equals more regen. It's not free energy, you do limit exhaust flow, which can reduce power. But the teams know this trade-off and they will balance this so they can gain overall. More regen means they can optimize the braking and have more juice in the battery throughout the race. But with these new regulations coming in and all this clever but expensive innovation is going in the bin. So what will change with the removal of the MGUH? Well, the first thing that will happen is that you will have suffer turbo lag because you won't have it spinning up the turbocharger. So the car is gonna become suddenly much less drivable because you will have turbo lag so what do we mean by way more drivable? Well, imagine a car with a ton of power, but loads of lag. You get on the throttle coming out of the corner and you have nothing, 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 and then immediate wheel spin. Whereas if you had a bit less power, but it came in smoother, you would be faster over the lap, as you can always apply the correct amount of power for the grip of the tires. The second thing that you won't have will be that extra energy recovered from the turbocharger along the straights and at part throttle that goes back into the battery to be redeployed out to the MG UK. And you won't have as much use of the added torque of the MG UK coming out of corners uh, that you would normally have because you're losing about 15 to 30 seconds of deployment from losing the charging capability of the MGUH. So all of the regen will need to happen in the braking zones rather than on the straights. But there is only so much regen you can do by braking the rear wheels, as the majority of the grip is at the front of the car when under braking. So there will need to be changes to how the teams charge their batteries during the race. So yes, MGUH is a big deal, and it will make the cars less drivable when it goes away. But to be honest, I'm a bit torn as to whether this is a good thing or not. Firstly, as someone who loves the development in Formula 1, the cars will likely be less efficient, and it does seem like a bit of a backward step. But the teams will likely recoup this loss in a season or two, like they always do. Then there's the drivability. It could actually be a good thing, where the drivers have to fight the cars more, because at the moment, the driving styles are all so smooth. The drivers take one application of the throttle and one sweep of the wheel to come out the corner. With these changes, there could be more oversteer and fighting the car on the throttle. The racing line would also need to change a little bit. If the power comes in very suddenly, you're going to want to have a straighter exit coming out of the corner. So when the boost does come in, the car can deal with it. And there will be more mistakes as well, as it will likely make the driving more difficult. Now that could separate the greats from the rest, but also shake things up a little bit. So it's hard to say, and we'll have to wait and see. You should check out this video on Aston Martin's genius new rear wing design and why other teams are probably going to copy it. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.